Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Carl Carpenter. I'm with Arrakis Consulting. Today we're just going to do a very high level overview of uh, audits and how audits work and, and things like that. Not going to get in the weeds. Again, it's, this is a, uh, a kind of a high level thing so you can understand what's supposed to happen, how it happens, things like that. We will, however, get in the weeds at a later date to discuss audits in, in, in greater detail. So get yourself a cup of coffee, a beer, a glass of water, uh, whatever, and let's uh, let's start talking about about audits. So first off, in today's world, uh, it's more important than ever that organizations have some sort of strong IT and cybersecurity posture in order to protect the company, the clients, you know, things and like that, so on and so forth. The question is, is how do they know if they're actually safe and secure and they're doing what they're supposed to do? Well, that's where audits come in to uh, come into play. So an audit is uh, it's a comprehensive review by a third party uh, of an organization's IT and cybersecurity processes, systems, policies, standards, procedures, things like that. And the goal is to basically give a grade and identify any vulnerabilities or room for improvement. Now, in some cases, with some audits, uh, based on the regulatory environment, it's not a 70% and you pass. It's uh, either you do all of it correctly and you pass, or you've done, or you didn't pass. So in some cases, 99% is a fail. 100% uh, is passed. So it's important to understand that audits by a third party are required by all regulatory environment. There's there's not a single one out there that says you can do whatever you want to do in a regulated environment and nobody has to check up on you. Uh, so popular environments like HIPAA or PCI or FFIC or CMMC, SOC 2, SOC 1, uh, those are all, you know, and ISO 27001 and so on, those are all going to involve third-party entities to come in and, and just do a double check to make sure you're, you're good to go. In some cases, though, based on the regulatory environment, you have a little leeway. So, so for example, a SOC 2, you can, get a, you can have a SOC 2 audit. You can actually maybe make some mistakes in there and still get your SOC 2 certificate. Um, but in other, uh, other regulatory environments, you absolutely, that's not an option. So the first step in a um, in a uh, audit is to assess the current environment. So these would be your policies, standards, procedures, looking at your ticketing system, uh, any other digital evidence that you might have that you could you know just literally email or have in a secure location for the auditor uh, to review. Now, why this is the first step is because specifically for because of policy standards and procedures. Specifically, those three categories of documents, policy standards, procedures, are the foundational level for everything in relation to some sort of regulatory environment. So it's important to understand that this is always going to be the first step. And if you really don't have enough to complete the first step, most auditors won't even go past the first step. They'll fail you right then and there and uh, they won't even spend the time uh, going through any other evidence if, uh, if you don't have it. And again, in some, so say, say for example, I know auditors that uh, if you're in a regulated environment and you do not have an encryption policy, that's, a f that's an immediate failure right then and there. Uh, if, you, if you don't have certain policies in place, encryption is certainly one of them. Um, so that's, it's important to understand that, that before you bring in an auditor to do anything, make sure your, your foundational material is in place. Arrakis also offers this service. Uh, if you are concerned about your foundational material, policy standards or procedures, you know, feel free to reach out. We can, uh, we can help you out with that. All right, the next step is the uh, testing phase. So basically, after the auditor gets all these uh, you know, phase one documents, then phase two or the second step is really where uh, they take those documents and they validate that the company is doing what they say they do. Um, 
it's fairly embarrassing for a company to say that, yeah, we're going to encrypt everything to AES-256, and then when the auditor comes in and does the test, finds out it's it's uh, triple DES or something that's much less than AES-256. So it's important to understand that what you write down in your policy standards and procedures has to be what you're actually doing uh, because the auditor will test you against what you say uh, you, you're you know you're going to do. Third step is reporting. Um, that's basically where the auditor puts all the findings together and um <coughs> and uh, offers some suggestions for remediation. A good report from uh, an auditor should be as detailed as they possibly can get. So, for example, when we do uh, assessment reports, we we narrow down to the actual phrase or the line number where something's required. We just did an ISO 27001 assessment just recently. And uh, in ISO 27001, you have this phrase called nonconformities as a part of our assessment. So this is not an audit. It's an assessment. Same process, though. Uh, we actually put the line number, what they're valid or validating against, how they failed it, and we offer suggestions for remediation and, and so on. So the report should be fairly detailed, not ambiguous or vague, um, because audits or auditors are not, are not cheap. So you want to get your money's worth. All right, then the fourth step is really after you receive the report, um, you know, the client company needs to remediate, needs to do something about it, right? Fix it. Um, because once, th there's a few reasons why you want to do this. First off, once a report has been generated, that audit company should be writing those reports to where they can testify against them in court. They can take that report and say, Your Honor, this is what I wrote, and I still agree with it, and uh, they were informed. So if there is a breach or a situation of some sort, you don't want a situation where you are where a company was formally told about a, an issue by a third party, uh, like an audit firm, and then the company never did anything about it. Because if there is a case of a breach or some sort of negative aspect of an end user being affected, then that could be viewed as negligence, and that audit report could, can be used against you. So from these, which kind of brings up a kind of a little side caveat there, uh, for us, for assessments, because it's not an actual audit and it's an assessment, um, we always try to, you know, have the chief legal officer as the contract holder because that gives us some legal protection because generally that person is an attorney. All right, then, so after you've you got the report, you fixed whatever, you know, who knows what it is. Could be hard, could be simple. Uh, hopefully, again, the report is very detailed and offers some advice on how to, you know, fix something. The next step, um, or the last step, and this doesn't always happen, is remediation validation. Now, some companies, some audit firms, they price their audits out in such a way that they come in, they do a complete assessment, they give a report, but there's some findings on it. But they also charge you for... Uh, remediation validation, which is basically when they come in and, uh, you know, y they have a list of whatever findings you had, and they come in and they just validate that those findings were remediated. Not every company does that. Uh, not every audit firm does that, though. Some, some audit firms just don't do it at all. Uh, some client companies, they specifically don't ask the audit firm to do that, and they don't pay for it either. And then they ask another company, another third party, to come in to validate just those uh, findings that were in the report. Um, from a security standpoint, this isn't necessarily a bad idea uh, because it, it kind of isolates what information is exposed to third parties. Um, so it's just something to think about. It's important to understand it doesn't always happen, though. So there is that. So in, in conclusion, uh, for audits of some sort, it's a, it's a fairly critical component of, a, of an organization's security strategy. There's just no way around uh, not doing an audit. And again, it is required by every regulatory environment out there. 
Um, it helps organizations, um, you know, have better visibility into how things are run within a company. It, you know, hopefully stay ahead. Now, in, in the past, in my personal situation with, uh, with companies, <coughs> I've, um, I've hired auditors, audit companies, to come in to do a job because once they've produced that specific report, it can be given to leadership. And leadership at that point is now faced with uh, the understanding that a third party came in. They found the same uh, issues that Carl found, blah, blah, blah. Now Carl's asking for more money <laughs> to support, to increase the budget so we can fix something. <coughs> and in one way, they almost have no choice but to accept the fact that a budget increase is needed or the leadership now has to understand they're going to accept the risk of that. And uh, I believe I do discover risk and how leadership should be uh, aware and uh, accept the risk or, or m help mitigate the risk in, in the, uh, the risk video that we did a while back, maybe on, uh, I think it was February, sometime in February. I'll put the link in the, the comments area. Uh, good video to watch them. And with that, this is short and sweet. We're just talking about audits. We're definitely going to get into more audit uh, features when we talk about GDPR, CCPA, CMMC, uh, things like that. CMMC is a, a, uh, a especially different kind of audit because certain levels of it require a person to be on site. A lot of the other audits can be just done over Zoom. But And with that, thanks everyone for showing up. And I will uh, talk to you guys later. Thanks again. See ya.